Good morning, USA. Good afternoon, Europe. Good evening, Asia. Uh, my name is Sophie Mathieu, and I'm leading the partnerships for Propel by MEPIM Events. And uh, I'm really glad to welcome you all this, um, this afternoon, this morning, this evening for the new daily talk session, um, a program we've been launching, we've been running uh, now for several weeks. And, um, and in which we give the stage to experts and uh, game changers uh, in the state um, environment. Today, I'm pleased to present the topic of the day, which is embracing changes in smart buildings and workplaces. And, and I'm also pleased to introduce Heather Whitman, who is principal of Building Ventures. Hello, Heather. Good morning. And Charles, <laughs> Charles Tuki, Chief of Marketing Officer of Join, um, Join Digital. Hello, Charles. Bonjour. Uh, Heather, are you there? Yeah. There I am. I was awesome. delayed. Thank you, Sophie. <laughs> Hope you're going great. We are. Great to see you. So just before you start, I uh, just want to um, remind everyone that uh, you have a Q&A section um, so in the different options, so you can uh, start thinking about your questions and Charles and either will um, will answer them right after their presentation. So Charles, Heather, the mic is yours. See you later. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you. Thank you team uh, MIPAM for having us uh, here today. Um, I think Charles, we have our slides going. Yep, I'm bringing them up Great. in a moment. Uh, so I'll just get us started. So I'm not sharing any news with anyone when I tell you that uh, globally, while we all remain in different phases and stages of dealing with the ongoing uh, pandemic, uh, most countries, uh, across the world are moving toward loosening uh, some of the safety restrictions that we've had in place and while well, simultaneously trying to ensure uh, everyone's safety, uh, both in returning to work, shopping uh, in cities across uh, the world. Uh, here in the US, uh, as of earlier this week, now all 50 states have um, opened in some capacity and uh you know as we like to say open for business uh but yet here we all are on zoom M many of us most of us the vast majority from our homes uh despite owners of office buildings having opened uh their buildings uh we are here so that is Charles and I, uh, our topic for today, you know, how do we actually uh, build trust and uh, want to safely uh, return to our offices? So let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Heather uh, from Building Ventures. We are an early stage uh, venture capital uh, investor. We invest in startups that are revolutionizing the way we design, build, operate, and ultimately experience our built environment. And I'm here today with Charles Stuckey, who is the CMO of one of our portfolio companies, Join. And I'll let Charles take it over and tell you about Join. All right, thank you very much. Well, um, Join is a, a company that is trying to really transform the way that we receive connectivity to do our work in the internet and the cloud the way that the cloud has transformed the way we consume computing and data centers. So join is connectivity as a service. There's no CapEx. We do this very efficiently by, bu by building on the standards that the cloud companies use for networking. So it's, so it's low cost to operate and always up to date as a cloud service. So what does that mean? That gives our customers faster, more reliable, more secure, easier to manage internet, Wi-Fi virtual private networking and access to the cloud. But also it turns out this same network is an, act, uh, an excellent sensor. It can also detect the numbers of people and where they are in buildings and where they're moving. And this can really help, we'll talk about it today to help ensure 
uh, a safe and healthy environment. And also we enable companies to treat that data as a good custodian. So be compliant with regulations that protect privacy like HIPAA and other standards in Europe and in California. Then like we see with other cloud technologies, this platform makes it really easy, frictionless to um, apply new technologies, to adopt new solutions. And examples that we may talk about today include things like scheduling access to buildings so that the lobbies don't get overcrowded or tracking and tracing guests and visitors so they go to the right place and, uh, and keep people feeling secure in the buildings. So in general, what JOIN is doing is helping uh, enable smart buildings and smart workplaces with connectivity, cybersecurity, being able to sense, and then feeding that data into automation so you can attract and retain tenants so you can automate the building and then move with agility to simplify and accelerate the adoption of technology going forward. So that's what JOIN's about. Awesome, thanks Charles. That's that's a great highlight of, I'm, I'm really excited to get into how all of those solutions can you know, paint that picture of what the future is possible for us returning to work. Um, but first let's unfortunately focus on a little bit more of the problem first. Uh, so we think, uh, Charles and I, and I hope you all agree that this pandemic has actually accelerated uh, some of the trends that we've been seeing uh, emerging in real estate in general, uh, like the opportunity for flex space and just the broader emphasis on tenant experience. Uh, but before we dig into those, let's just kind of take um, stock of the current sentiment of some of the largest global employers of knowledge workers um, on the planet and where they stand about going back to the office. So we have four huge examples here uh, of Morgan Stanley saying that they basically don't think they need as much space as, as they've had in the past. Uh, we've got Citigroup uh, saying that they actually don't feel safe in the space they have. They don't trust uh, the solutions that are out there for getting back to work. Uh, we see uh, Twitter famously saying, hey, we think we're thriving from home and we think it's what our employees want. We're going to do it indefinitely. And uh, lastly, you have uh, both Goldman Sachs, Citigroup and uh, JP Morgan Chase all saying, hey, logistically, how are we even going to get people in and out of the buildings? We need lobby and elevator solutions to even set foot into a building, let alone change the spaces to accommodate uh, within our offices. So Charles, how do we even begin to tackle some of these concerns? Yeah, and, and so we think that we should use technology to help with the solution, but a but large part is to build the confidence of the workers so that it has to be safe, but also they have to feel safe. Because what we've seen is, is that building owners that we talk to and we actually listening around the world, including with uh, groups like this, they've cleaned the building, they put stickers on the floor, here's where to stand, don't touch this doorknob, uh, here's antiseptics, you can clean your hands, but then you can look in Shanghai, New Zealand, where there's very little, few cases, people aren't coming back, they're coming back very slowly. Well, this is, we think, because they're knowledge workers and they wanna do this in an informed way. Right, so we created this platform as I just described to enable secure cloud-centric computing and they figured out I can get to my cloud resources from home, right? You need to do some things to be safe from home as well. But we think that means that their return to work will also be based on knowledge and that they build up trust by sharing knowledge with them. So we think that also isn't a one page answer that there's going to be multiple iterations on what works and what works in which part of the building, which part of the of the experience, which part of balancing commutes versus safety, etc. And we think what's really important and interesting is that the, if you in any iteration, if you want to iterate your way to an answer, you need to measure, you need to be able to see what's happening. So creating visibility into what's happening in the building is going to help build the ability to respond and sharing that with the workers builds their trust. Here's how Occupy the Building was 
yesterday. Here's how occupied it is now. Uh, here's when the rooms were clean. Here's how we're managing the elevators. By sharing that, um, then that builds their trust. Whether there is or isn't a problem is one thing. Whether people believe there's going to be a problem is equally important. So we think that's also then how the industry discovers what a full building occupancy looks like. We're not sure at this point, will it be the same density as before and people just adjust? Or will that only happen after we have completely vanquished the virus? Or uh, are there other working arrangements that people stagger working from home or they create satellite locations? What will full occupancy look like we think will also be discovered iteratively and be informed by, by information? Yeah, I think that is just beautifully put, uh, Charles, in, you know, when we're thinking about how we conduct all other aspects of business and make decisions in our lives, of course, it's so simple. We measure, uh, we see the results, we verify those results, and then we implement and iterate changes based on, uh, based on those things. Why would adapting um, during this crazy time be any different and when it's even more critical we just need to be able to gather that data um, and inform those iterations and you know we had that great quote by uh drawer poleg up there that mm -hmm. says um you know basically that uh real estate is inv is evolving from an asset into a business and yes we thought this was the case even before the pandemic However, you know, what he means by this is the fact that businesses exist in volatile, ever-changing environments, and we have to make our decisions based on how to please uh, our customers and really drive results, use data, of course, to do that, versus an asset, which we all know can, you know, be very uh, stable and stagnant and uh, simply let uh, the world uh, evolve around it but that's not the case anymore for real estate and uh, like we said earlier uh the pandemic has only kind of accelerated this and thankfully we have companies like join uh working to enable that measurement so yeah really interesting because the the way real estate had worked you construct a building takes years then you lease it on super long-term leases and then people occupy the space and the only thing they do is sort of check in but if you think about how you interact with, for example, your commute today, you use a map that has interactive information and you navigate, you may use Waze or Lyft or, and then that communicates with somebody else and that their asset and it's sort of a real time communication to manage how you navigate and buildings haven't been that way. But we think this is, as you said, this pandemic puts digital on fast forward and it turns out among other sensors, the uh, the Wi-Fi and blue these access points that we think of as Wi-Fi also have Bluetooth sensors in them, so that you can count devices and people and figure out where they are and calculate distances and movement. And if people opt in, you can associate identity. You can add other information about the building. You can bring in news and weather and public health alerts, and you can have a robust communication like you do with your commute about what's going on that you participate in, and you can even communicate between employers and employees, between employers and buildings, et cetera, and coordinate um, some of these key activities. And the ones that we hear that are most uh, important to coordinate at this point is access. So understanding and improving the flow through the entryway, the lobby, and the elevator lobbies, right? You can put stickers on the floor in the elevator, but if you create a crowd just outside the elevator, you didn't really solve the problem. And so that like a lot of other things in our life can be scheduled. And as I said, like with an Uber ride, you can communicate in real time. Here's what's happening. This is your, I'd like to ride the elevator. Okay, in five minutes, we're gonna give you a text that'll be time to go to the lobby sort of thing. And then if you're gonna put new things in the lobby, like a thermometer to take people's temperature, well, you need to connect that to something so it doesn't get hacked and the data doesn't get stolen. So that's on the access side. And then on the tracing, not so much the have you been exposed tracing, that's probably a public health application, but tracking people and deliveries and guests through the building and then understanding, collecting uh, information about how different spaces are used throughout the day for analysis. And sometimes, in some cases, this is true 
uh, in different uh, municipalities, they may ask for reports on it. We've asked you to keep your buildings at 50%. What are you doing? What are you achieving? So tracking and tracing in a way that's privacy compliant, in a way that protects the data from data loss, and in a way that you can sort of have integrity of the data. So this seems to be access tracing and compliance. In the US, some people will phrase compliance as liability, but that's two sides of the same coin. Uh, these seem to be what the most urgent needs are and where we think um, we can have an immediate impact using some of these technologies. Does that ring true with what you're hearing, Heather? Absolutely. Uh, you know, you know, of course, um, among ourselves, we call join, you know, that backbone of the smart, the smart building. And I'd add even one more thing that's hot on our minds. Um, at Building Ventures, and I think everyone's mind is uh, indoor air quality and how JOIN being that backbone, that central nervous system that powers and protects the flow of information uh, throughout a building is also going to enable the sensors and mechanics of um, what's cleaning our air ultimately and keeping us informed of that air quality. So I think just one more critical um, uh, technology that joy join will power ultimately. Yeah, and, and so I, I hit this, so I'll go through this, this next one quickly, but we, um, if you have this connect secure and sense platform, then, uh, and we are uh, developing these with partners, scheduling, coordinating flows in the buildings, guiding and tracking could just can become apps uh, the way that we use other applications. Mm -hmm. And the same thing you just mentioned, Heather, bringing in uh, other information like air quality, connecting to the airflow, right? Uh, airflow systems and making sure both in real time and being able to analyze is our airflow policy matching our actual density. Those are things that we're all actively um, building on top of this, this platform. Exactly. All right, so we wanna make sure we have plenty of time for questions. So I'll just kind of go through these key takeaways really quickly to summarize. So. Getting open for business is the new imperative for our owners. Um, and to do that, we need to be able to test, measure, and iterate on a variety of solutions that make uh, our tenants comfortable getting back to the office. Uh, we need to enable the tech solutions that are there to measure uh, and make these changes and verify uh, that those changes have actually been effective. And we need to be able to share that information back to the tenants in the building. Otherwise, uh, you're not building that trust. And like Charles said, uh, what actually is and what people fear is are you know two distinct things and equally important. And those learnings will, we believe, ultimately shape what the offices of the future look like, what our new normal is, and that will be a much more informed future, uh, being able to uh, gather that data and measure. Anything else, Charles? No, I think that's right. Hopefully this, this, this set of capabilities will, I mean, we all hope the future will be COVID free, but I think we all would think that we'd be better, like Troy says, at running a business once we've learned to add into that business the ability to see more and to communicate better, not just machine to machine, but machine to people, people to people, to be able to coordinate better how they use their, their real estate assets. Exactly, and Join was already working toward that future before uh, this crisis. Uh, so, you know, maybe a silver lining is that we get there a little faster. Sophie, should we take some questions? Yes, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. It was really, uh, really clear. And um, just to, to start questions, um, do you think that, uh, both of you, do, do you think that these measures uh, we, uh, we see that uh, um, are implementing in the, uh, in the um, office buildings, are they are changing on sh only short term or on the long term, the, um, the tenants' mindset? needs or the real estate, you know, um, uh, projects um, for the sector. So basically, is that a short term or long term uh, change? 
Heather? Uh, oh, sure, I'll start that one. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's both. I, I think, you know, we need to make immediate changes, uh, you know, with the spaces that we have uh, today, whether, you know, that's transforming them with digital solutions like join or, you know, actually, ac making actual design changes to the physical space in order for uh, for workers to want to come back. Also, uh, I 100% believe that it is a long-term transformation as well, starting with the way uh, we design and build. Uh, that's, you know, the bet we've made at Building Ventures is that this is a true life cycle, a true continuum, and to really affect change, we need to think about how we design our buildings uh, for the future and build them sustainably and safely and then uh, employ technologies like JOIN to operate and affect uh, the experience of our tenants long term more positively. And one of the one of the things that technology has enabled is more flexibility. I use the example of cloud computing. And if you think about it and you talk to entrepreneurs, part of what created the real explosion in all the applications that we love using was the existence of Amazon Web Services, which lowered sort of the cost of trying things and of changing your mind because you didn't have to build a specialized infrastructure. So that the flexibility created by Amazon Web Services actually made the whole industry larger, more competitive, more valuable. Well, not overnight in such a dramatic way, but real estate and the usage of real estate also is becoming more flexible. We already were seeing that with uh, co-working like we work and flexible office space uh, and all real estate owners providing more of the services that you might get from your real estate eventually as a turnkey the day you arrive with things like we call them spec suites. But suites that are already wired in some cases already furnished so that companies can move more quickly and, and change their business plans in a sort of six month, one year period, which is how business works even quarterly, as opposed to making 10 year commitments and hoping that they were right. Uh, so this per permanent change is essentially more agility for the entire industry. And it's a little bit painful when sometimes if you're counting on sort of the the tenure model and then you're you're moving to a flexible model but as we've seen with the tech industry the whole industry gets larger and healthier by being more flexible so i think that's part of the long-term change that's happened okay interesting um we've been talking and you've been talking specifically about um reassuring the um the tenants to come back uh, in a safe uh, mode into your offices is that the um, the same for real estate investors that invest in a, in a, in offices. Uh, I mean, for them to um, to um, keep the um, office um, um, segmentation, office assets as um, interesting in their in their radar. We, um, I'll I'll start on that, Heather. We've seen sure. um, um, a lot of discussion about new investment in office space should be looking towards uh, flexibility across usage. So a different type of flexibility, you might say mixed use, but then that sort of implies from the beginning, you've decided what the mix is. But what, what the industry is talking about is mixed use that is flexible sort of in an ongoing basis where you might say this, this new development is office space plus retail plus residential and we can alter that mix. And you'd say, okay, if you're downtown, does that make sense? It might, people may want, more people might decide to work closer to work because of this. Does it make sense in suburban locations? Yes, more companies may decide to put satellite offices in suburban locations to, in order to reduce the commute of various populations. And we've all learned to use digital commerce more than we did before however much we did it before in this household we get a lot of shoes arriving from amazon even before covid <laughs> but now we got a lot of other stuff coming that way too we've all learned to do more of it but we know that restaurants versus retail is another mix change that people can do create experiences instead of just fulfillment in the retail so investing in 
in real estate that is commercial real estate that has is flexible even on an ongoing basis seems to be the mandate. Okay, great. So question from uh, um, one person uh, in the audience. Do you see solutions for residential buildings as home working is a new normal? So what could be interesting smart home solutions concerning, uh, concerning COVID-19? Charles, do you so want to start I'll, that one? Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, and I, I'll start, but I'm interested what you're hearing from your partners, partner group as well about this. But definitely, um, working from home has proven to be more effective by far than people expected. We encourage people to use a virtual private network solution. If you don't have one during COVID, we're offering one for free, by the way, no strings attached if your company needs uh, a VPN, a virtual private network, uh, basically so that it looks like you're coming from the office and, and hackers can't really see your home machine and your and your assets. So, but but by and large we had an initial burst of cyber attacks but that's largely under control and people are pretty effective uh, working from home but we think what that turns into is more people will work from home than were working before but there are many people who want to be together and there are many people who don't have the conditions at home because they have children they have noise um, that they would prefer to have the option or or to go to the office every day. And so we think that just creates this another type of flexibility, which is the company is more flexible on being able to work from home or satellite, which gives them some more flexibility on where they hire from in some cases. Uh, so that we will probably, Heather, I'd be interested, start counting in the math home offices as part of the office stock, but only a part. Yeah, I agree, Charles, and I think this actually um, plays into the previous question as well, uh, where um, flexibility of use is really uh, the key theme that we're going to see in both offices and the design and building of, res of new residential homes and even uh, rehabbing of residential and uh, build out of, of office space. So uh, we're going to be thinking much more about how we need to use these spaces, getting as specific as uh, this is, I want to go into the office today for a performance review with my employees. So this is the type of space that I want to have. I have a large um, a large uh, board meeting. So I want to go into a different type of flexible space for that. Uh, I'm merely uh, doing some research uh, or uh, reading and writing emails. I'm going to stay home, but I need to ensure that uh, I have a workable space with a door that closes and connectivity and security that I can trust. Uh, so uh, we definitely think that uh, this impacts residential and increases uh, the need for smart homes even more. So uh, again, playing into Joyn's value proposition and um, another investment we made that has not been announced yet uh, but also thinking about how we can efficiently design residential homes at scale, but allow for a decent amount of customization by need as well. Uh, so definitely a trend that extends into residential, but with very similar themes, in my opinion. Maybe a last question before we, um, we close the, um, the session. Um, for, for you specifically, is there, um, does uh, the situation change your um, strategy in terms of investment into your companies uh, you're supporting? Are you um, looking for specific technologies, new technologies or very specific angle in the technologies? How do you, how do you see that? Great, yeah, great question. Uh, for us, being that uh, we had this investment thesis that uh, we needed to invest in technologies that would uh, would uh, bring usher in a better built world. Uh, we've actually been thinking kind of along these lines uh, for quite a while and kind of back to what I was saying, uh, the themes remain the same, build uh, more safely, build more sustainably and design. Uh, 
operate with more efficiency, uh, to you know, be greener, uh, to be uh, more resilient, and make sure you're delivering that customer experience uh, that, that will keep uh, people confident in uh, our built environment and build better, sustainable, livable cities. Uh, so COVID-19 uh, really just exacerbated all of these problems, shown a spotlight uh, on several of them, whether it's safety on the job site or you know, people's comfort uh, in the air quality of an office or cybersecurity um, working from home or office. Uh, all of these things were just you know, really magnified. And I think we uh, are very lucky and our portfolio companies uh, have been so forward thinking about these things uh, that their mission is even clearer and so is ours. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're very lucky in that respect. I don't think, you know, every firm and uh, kind of, and group of portfolio companies uh, have that uh, level of alignment, but uh, I'm very happy uh, with uh, the way our portfolio companies um, have, have been able to adapt to this world. And uh, I think even more rapidly uh, broaden their, their work and mission. Okay, very clear. So confirming that uh, we need the game changers in the in the real estate environment to you know, build better places to live, to work, and uh, etc. Good. So thank you. So we uh, we will um, end the session on the on that. Um, so great opportunities in a very weird uh, period, um, but um, but thank you very much, uh, guys. Um, uh, for your presence, uh, for all the information you shared. Thank you everyone to, um, to be with us and uh, to keep on, um, on uh, connecting uh, with us. Tomorrow we have another session. So same timing, uh, I would say again, thank you and see you tomorrow. Have a good day, good evening or good night. Bye-bye.